And uh, I think it's a good thing for all cars. Certainly that's been great. Um, we're getting some rain here now at the moment. And uh, let's hope it uh, doesn't come down too heavily. Just waiting now for the national anthem. Bob, we're not going to get too much of a chance to play uh, any commercials. We'll go back to you, Drake, and then come back here shortly. When you're driving on the Gold Coast, chances are trucks you pass will have the letters TNT on them. They're the trucks of TNT Gold Coast. There's lots of them, but then there's lots of the Gold Coast for them to cover. And as the Gold Coast continues to expand, so will we. More than any other carrier, TNT Gold Coast is responsible for delivering the nation's leading products to our marketplace and taking our products to the rest of Australia and the world. So next time you pass a TNT Gold Coast truck, go on, wave to the driver. Like you and I, he's helping the Gold Coast grow. On your mark, get set, go for these gold medal specials at Bartlett's Liquor Barn. Tooth Stubbies, $10.99 a carton. Grand Scotch Whiskey, $9.99 a bottle. Neo Burring Leap for Wine, $2.29. Bundaberg Rum, $9.99. Littman 4 Litre Wine Casks, $3.99. And for the winning celebrations, Kaiser Stool Champagne, $2.99 a bottle. First, second and third all go to these great gold medal specials at Bartlett's Liquor Barn at Narang. Well, it's a quarter to three, a very late start. Looks like it's going to be a very late finish for the Gold Coast Grand Final Australian Rules, so back to Bob Bowman. Thanks a lot, Bob. Yes, uh, well, we've had the national anthem now, so uh, we uh, should be having the toss. Ronnie, what about the wind? The wind is favouring the creek end of the ground at this stage, and I'd say it's no more than a one or two goals because it is not blowing directly down the ground. It's coming across the ground, but definitely the favouring the creek end of the ground. So we'll just wait now. The uh... Oh, we must... We can never start a grand final without up there Kazali in the background. I don't think this uh, particular game needs any more uh, atmosphere than what we've uh, had a build up uh, so far with the uh, very uh, exciting uh, reserves grade uh, game and, uh, and the Colts game. If you missed those earlier scores, the Colts went to Burley 2015-135, defeating Southport 10-8-68. And in the reserves, Broadbeach 12 18 90 defeated Southport 9 16 70. So uh, the toss, I think, has been won. And uh, just have a look. Uh, has it been done as, uh, yet, Ronnie, or not? Well, I, the Southport players are pointing that they're going to kick to the highway into the ground, so I'd say they have lost the toss. But... Well, I think that's it, yes. I can see big Wally Walsh going up to the forward line. Yeah, uh, yes, I've just noticed the... I am trying to see. He's moving to the other end of the ground, so I'd say Southport are definitely kicking to the highway end of the ground, so I'd say Southport have lost their third one already today because they've just lost the toss because if they'd have won it, they'd have kicked with the win. Now, yeah, just checking out these interchange players, I see that uh, Lovett is on the interchange. Oh, no, he's not. No, I told you this might happen, mate. Lovett is going onto the ground. And I think we'll see some fireworks very, very early. Well, I think that's a sensational move. They've dragged Kayron off the ground. Now, Kayron was one of their best players when he came on last week. Uh, Love it lined up on the interchange bench just after the toss. And then just then, when they get into position, they've decided to swing uh, Love it on and take Kayron off. Well, who knows what's going to happen, but... Uh, I tell you what, the way Lytton Cayman played last week, I'd be having him out there to start with. So would I. He's a good footballer, but uh, they're, just, they're very cunning southport here. They ran Lovett as if he was going into the back and put him into the centre of the ground. A uh, little bit of on Lovett there, mate. Uh, he is a deaf chappy, and uh, they've sort of got to tell him by signals what to do. But by gee, he's a good footballer. He's a big, strong player. And uh, there will be no one want to start any rough tactics for these out there because he'll be as much as they get. And he's picked up Rocky Larkin. I thought this might be the move. Well, it's also another move that big Wally Walsh is there at full forward, not Selwyn Short. He looks to be on the half-forward flank. The bounce of the ball to start the 1982 grand final between Southport and Coolangatta at Salk Oval. Ronnie Lee got first possession and got tackled and got... Uh, 
penalised for dropping the ball, the free kick going to Southport, and it'll go there to uh, Butch Thompson, who's on ground. Butch Thompson at centre-half forward for the Magpies. The kick goes down to the forward line. There is a mark to Coolangatta, and it's been taken there by Black in the back pocket. Runs around with the kick now towards centre-half back. Black going themselves for the mark. Love it went up and get it. Dan Barrow pushed in the back, and the umpire said he dropped the ball. Free kick going to Southport to Selwyn Short. Not too sure about that one. Anyway, Sal Short have the kick and drives them forward again. There's a whistle again. What's this one for? Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, well, it's against Lovett in that case. Ronnie Lee was on the mark and Lovett ran across him and knocked him to the ground after the ball had been kicked. Good decision by the umpire. So it's kicked forward there by uh, Doreen for uh, Cool and Gatter, but it's been marked by Budge of Southport at half-back. That's Budge, the kick to half-forward. Good mark to uh, Wellington, the former Essendon player. Plays on quickly, the long kick down towards the forward pocket. Big Wally Walt goes up, but there's a Cool and Gatter mark. And a nice mark taken out there in the back pocket by Mick Young. Mick yeah. Young for Cool and Gatter now with the kick. And he'll kick this ball towards the centre ground. Robert Rocky up there and takes a great mark in the centre. He seems to excel against uh, Southport, this guy. Robert right. Rocky Larkin in the centre with a kick right up towards the full foot line. Players go up, no mark. Southport will possibly clear here through Boyce. Boyce has got a clear run, picks it up, runs around one tackle. A long hand pass comes out to David McMahon. David McMahon with a right foot kick down towards half-back, but Tim O'Shaughnessy takes a good mark. towards the swing and the 15-metre penalty against Danny Upfell. O'Shaughnessy, the big uh, centre-half back for Coolangatta. Has the kick now, right down the full forward. Oh, great mark to Munro, not paid. Oh, he almost got the second touch, but just couldn't hold it long enough. And the umpire has decided to bounce the ball. It's about 40 metres out from the Cool and Gatter goal. With, uh, now hang on, the whistle's gone. The umpire is, uh, what's he doing, Ron? Well, he's picked up something off the ground. Uh, I don't know what it is. He's thrown it to the boundary umpire. It looks like a watch or something. Maybe that was dropped out there by someone in the uh, in the, between the two games, but he's just picked it up and thrown it off the ground because it was dangerous to players. So there's going to be a free kick to Kuhlman Gatter here from that ball up, and the free kick will go to Belford. Now, Flash is only about uh, 45 to 50 metres out. He's normally a good kick. He's a bit too far out to kick this one, I think. He's not that long a kick, Bob. There's the kick by Belford. It's sailing down towards the pocket. And it's been punched away by the Southport defence in Gibson. Johnny Needle picked it up, got a hand pass out. But it's picked up by Clark, gave it to McGuan. McGuan is on the boundary line. Ran around one tackle, Gavin McGuan. He kicks the ball to centre. Ronnie Lee dived in there and took a good mark. And he looks very determined today, Ronnie Lee. Yes, as I said on yesterday's show, Ronnie Lee won't play the same game as he did last time. He'll be out to prove that he is a better footballer than that. And we all know he is. The kick by Ron Lee goes in towards the pocket. He was looking for the pass to Kilo there, but it just beat him and it's gone over the line. Now to five minutes of action in the first quarter, and at this stage, no score on the board. Curl and Gatter kicking to the end, which we think uh, is favoured by the breeze, which is it's flying virtually across the ground, but more so to the end in which Curl and Gatter are kicking. Gavin McGuan breaks clear of the pack for Southport, has a long right foot kick to half forward. There's no one home for the uh, Magpies, and the good mark taken for Curl and Gatter by Roger Bett, centre half back. Bett to centre half forward. Kilo marks, a chest mark. Runs around the man on the mark. Goes onto the left foot. The kick down to full forward. Munro. No, couldn't get the mark. There's been a mark play though to Southport. And it, uh, it's going back there to the former North Melbourne player, Doug Byron. He brings it to the grandstand side. There's Gavin McGuan with the ball. Has a kick. A right foot. Half back. Goes up looking for uh, Wellington. He couldn't get it. It's picked out of the pack there by Blight for Southport. He got it across now to Ronnie Lee. The left foot kick by Lee goes to half forward. The bounce of the ball beats the Southport player. Pettard picked it up. Gave it to Needles. Johnny Needles, the left foot kick down towards goal. It's falling through, I think, is it? No, it's marked by Munro. A great mark to Munro. It just didn't get the distance. And Munro has marked only about two metres out. Plays on, kicks the goal, and he's put it through. Yes, first goal of the day to Coolangatta, and that will make them very, very happy. It's right through the uh, centre, and Coolangatta are one goal. Southport yet to score on the TNT scoreboard. Six minutes, seven minutes gone now into the first term. Well, a good bit of play there by Johnny Needle. Ron. Good football by Johnny Needle. He's always a danger when he lurks around those packs. Picks the ball up. And he always looks for someone. In that case, he looked for the goal, but it was a little bit offline. Munro's good judgment in taking the mark. Normally, a player would have let it go and hope it went through. Good play by Munro and Needles. From the ball up in the centre, it comes out to Needle again. There he goes. John Needle kicked a half forward. 
McMahon goes up, couldn't get the mark for Southport, but he got it across to O'Connor. O'Connor gave it to Byron. The long hand pass goes here towards Peter Eyes. Peter Eyes from the foot, kicking it up to half forward for the Magpies. It comes out towards Wellington. Uh, Wellington's having trouble picking it up. It's a scramble here. Randall got it, a little short kick in, but Ronnie Lee's there for the Blues. The kick by Lee to half forward, and uh, no, uh, two, two cool and gather players went up and spoiled each other then. The ball comes to down, a scramble developed out there, and there will be a bounce up at centre half forward for Cool and Gatter. There's the bounce. Knocked down by Petard for the Blues. He got a big uh, 10 metre uh, knockout there. He's looking for Larkin, who's got a bit of a push. And the umpire saw it that way. Robert Rocky, centre half forward, maybe a bit too far out to score. Well, well, Robert Lockie Larkin's a long kick. I think the only problem he'll have is accuracy, but he'll kick it right down into the 10-yard square. Of oh, course, the kick is uh, off the side of the boots, going towards the boundary line. Byron, no, Byron grabbed it, but uh, he's been given a free kick for a tackle as the ball went out. Funny decision, that, but Byron played on quickly, shot the pass into Peter Rives out there, who takes the mark. Peter Rives for Southport with a kick to half forward. Wellington in front of O'Shaughnessy this time takes a great mark. Yeah, this is a player that's got to lift southward. They've got to win across this half-forward line. And he's the player that can keep them in the game if he can fire. Kick by one down to the box. Butch Thompson's there. No, overran the ball. Craig Purcell picked it up. Gave the hand pass to Big Wally Walsh. Big Wally Walsh has the kick in towards the pocket. Villiers is there for Cool and Gatter. He punched the ball across. It's kicked off the ground by uh, Nusman. He's lost position. It could be a free kick to Southport. There is for an in the back. And it went across there to Upfell. Upfell tried the short pass to Wise. It didn't come up because Randall got it. Randall got it to O'Shaughnessy. O'Shaughnessy to Larkin. Robert Rocky comes in with a kick to half forward. Looking out there for Belford. They've got Nick Trevine on him today. Belford not a blonde. Beautifully picked all up from 30 metres out. Had a shot to goal, but it's hit the behind post. So it will be out of bounds on the full. Kilmangatta is still a goal. Southport yet to score. First quarter underway by about nine and a half minutes. And once again, we see Southport going to attack and cannot capitalise on it. I said it before and I'll say it again. They're weak on the forward line. Well, there's the uh, kick coming uh, towards the half-back line for Southport. Livingston. Livingston. He's got the ball. He's playing it along in front of him on the boundary line. Uh, now the umpire will have to bounce this because uh, he was tackled. Couldn't get rid of it. And there will be a ball up. Centre wing on the outer side of the ground. The first quarter of this grand final here at uh, Salt Oval. From the ball up comes to the ground. Larkin's there. He knocked it out nicely to Balford. Balford the hand pass to Mick Young who was fair and flattened. He's still on the ground and uh, there's a bit of a scuffle out there. A bit of a scuffle. I've never seen Jim Mackey move so quick to give a free kick to move the game on. And there's a big fight but uh, they want the umpire is saying play on. And uh, Mick Young has got this free kick at half back. They want to break these fights up early. Now Mick Young will come in with a kick for uh, Cool and Gatter. There it goes right down towards the forward line. There's uh, almost a mark to the Blues, not played, picked up by Budge for Southport, he lost it, Buddha Maxwell got a hand pass out of the pack, it goes in towards the pocket, they're going in hard here, and the umpire is going to bounce the ball, there's a player still out over there. Yes, it wasn't uh, Young that got the knock, it was a Southport player, and it's a Southport player that is still on the ground. Well, Mick Young got the knock and he got the free kick, but the Southport player I think that uh, knocked him is the one that uh, come off the worst over it, and he's the one that's on the ground. Now this time we've got a free kick here and it's going to Cool and Gatter and it looks like uh, Villiers. Yes, it's Paul Villiers. Now Paul Villiers is a very good kick and uh, distance shouldn't worry him and his accuracy is normally good. And he has... He's put it through. Yeah. Yes, uh, Paul Villiers is a very accurate kick, uh, either with a stab pass or kicking for goal, and uh, I wasn't surprised at all to see him kick that goal, although he might have looked a little bit far out. He's a big man and uh, a very good kick. So uh, on, the, on the TNT scoreboard now, it's Cool and Gatter. They're two straight goals to Southport yet to score, but uh, Ronnie uh, Cool and Gatter are kicking with the uh, end that we think's favoured by the breeze. Oh, that must have been the scoring end in the games today, but uh, by the same token, they're looking good as they're doing it. They're doing it very, very easily. Picked out of the pack, a knockout by uh, Walsh, but it was picked up by O'Shaughnessy. O'Shaughnessy's kick goes up, and a nice mark taken to Butch. Butch uh, for uh, Southport at half-back. We'll move on to the left foot. The kick goes towards centre-half forward position. Craig Purcell knocked it out. Uh, comes out towards a teammate in Big Wally Walsh. He got the hand pass across. Sharked by uh, a cool and get a player in bet. Went across and uh, Ronnie Lee took that uh, short pass. The kick by Lee goes to centre-half back, but there's uh, a good mark taken 
to uh, Southport here. It's been pulled down by Butch Thompson in the centre as the stretcher goes out to that Southport player who will be coming off the ground. We'll pick him up in a moment. The kick by Butch Thompson to half forward. Up they go. Comes the ground again. Picked up by Blight. Blight the hand pass to Ronnie Lee. Ronnie Lee for the Blues. The short pass is brilliantly placed to Dan Barrow who juggles the mark but takes it centre wing on the grandstand side for Coolangatta. The kick by Danny Barrow to half forward. Players go up again. No one could get the mark. McGuan got it and was tackled too high according to the umpire. And there will be a free kick. It wasn't McGuan, it was Livingston. Livingston will take the free kick at half back for South 40. No, he went for the hand pass to Doug Byron. A quick hand pass by Byron to Budge. Budge for Southport it was a left foot kick, goes down towards the uh, half forward flank position, comes to ground again, Purcell, a quick hand pass out of the pack, Kieran's on the ground, the danger man, the left foot kick in towards goal has hit the post and it's gone through for one point and that's their first score, the TNT scoreboard now, it's cool and get a two straight goals to Southport, one point. Yes, Kieran on the ground, well of course that had to happen, I don't know who this player is at injured that they're carrying off on a stretcher, but uh, naturally Kieran had to go on. Uh, because they were one player short and full credit to the umpires they gave permission for him to come on before the other player was cleared off the ground it was obvious he was going to take no part in the game so they allowed him to go on and uh, that's good umpiring they were just waiting for the uh, kick in uh, no I think we are waiting at the moment until the uh, player comes off the ground they've got him right off the ground now it looks like it's very hard to pick him up here could be uh, Mick Trevine is it not too sure. We'll see if we can find him out on the ground. Travine. Mick Travine. is off, injured, and uh, Southport in the wars already. The kick, uh, we've got a kick now towards the centre of the ground, but uh, Budge is there for Southport, and he'll clear that ball for the Magpies. Kicks it to half-back. Randall's there. Gabe Nusman comes in with the ball. Now, Nusman has, uh, having a bit of trouble picking it up. He got it, got a head-high tackle. The umpire saw it that way. Gabe Nusman will take the free kick despite what... Oh, there's a fight on here. I was wondering what the crowd noise was. Ah, oh, it's just two, two or three blokes just having a bit of a scuffle out there. Nothing serious. Well, I don't know how anyone can score a goal because the game's going on. There's no goal umpire, Ron. This is a sensation. You'll have to tell us what's going to happen because there's been a market full forward. There's no goal umpire. He's refereeing the fight. Yeah, well, he's not actually. He's just trying to talk, talk some fellas into stop this argument. Well, what's the situation well, with the, the goal umpire? The central umpire make a decision. The central umpire is the only one that can give the all clear anyway. Love it, Don. Voice off for South. Court. The goal up, no, the umpire has held up play until the goal umpire came back from the fight. Had to kick the goal. The goal umpire was running backwards, turns around and signals a goal. Yeah, well, he's central umpire. The central umpire told him it was a goal. It was obvious he couldn't see it. The central umpire can always get a decision. In fact, a goal umpire cannot award a goal until he gets the approval from the central umpire. Well, I didn't actually see what caused that fight or how it started, but uh, there was uh, quite a few guys in it, and uh, well, there was one umpire there trying to break it up. The other umpire let the play go on, and that's when the goal umpire come out to uh, try and break it up as well. And uh, well, I think I've got a goal out of it anyway. There's a straight goal. 18 points, Southport one point. We've only played about, uh, let's work it out, 15 minutes and it's been a tough game so far, but we expected it. Ronnie Lee grabbed the ball out of the centre for the Blues. Shoots the kick in, looking for Belford at half forward. Belford gets in front, picked it up, shot the hand pass out, but it was intercepted nicely by Byron. Byron now for Southport with a kick to half forward. Players got Wellington marks in front, starring there for Southport. A good mark to Wellington. He's at centre half forward. And it's just as well he is starring with Southport. is still falling down forward and he's got to try and kick it from centre half forward and he's a fair way out and he's got no assistance with the win but uh, well he seems to think he can kick it I tell you what it'll be a good kick if he can do it there, there comes Wellington now he's lined it up he's taken a lot of time over it it's a long kick sailing through for a, a goal beautiful kick well he has played senior football with Essen and that guy and uh, obviously he showed a bit of his talent there kicking that ball from a long way out around about 55 to 60 metres I think that does prove one thing that can score goals from either end today that was not that bad oh you can there's no worries about that but by gee that was a great kick and uh, I don't care if you played VFL football or only played Gold Coast or any other football that was a long kick and full, good, full marks to him because it wasn't only long, but it was dead straight through the centre so on the TNT scoreboard it's cool and get a three straight goals 18 Southport 1-1-7 17 minutes gone, first quarter of the Gold Coast Australian Football Grand Final as we await the uh, ball up in the centre and uh, we'll have a bounce up in the centre of the ground now. First quarter, there's the bounce. 
high bounce it is too. Players wait for it to come down to them. Finally it was grabbed out of the pack by Villiers. He tried the hand pass which has been sharked by Gavin McGuan. Gavin McGuan the hand pass is picked up though by Kuhl and get a player in Doreen. Doreen shot a hand pass out. It uh, goes towards Wellington who had a left foot kick in towards the goal line. Peter Guy sets himself and takes a good mark for Kuhl and Gatter right in that last line of defence in the back pocket. Guy tried the pass to Lee but it's too wide and it's gone over the line and out of bounds. It's in the uh, half forward line for Southport as they trail in the uh, first quarter. Throw in this time, comes to the ground, picked up by Gabe Nusbin. Nusbin kicks it towards the wing. Danny Barrow's there. He puts the ball along in front of him, but uh, coming out though was uh, Barrow again. He got it himself this time, and he shot a hand pass out, but McMahon came out. McMahon picked it up, had a hand pass, and he was uh, tackled heavily, uh, David McMahon, and he will take the free kick. He's virtually in the centre of the ground for Southport, and he should drive them forward. David McMahon. There's the kick by McMahon. Goes right up towards the uh, forward pocket position again. Almost the Southport mark. Not paid. Picked up by Peter Guy. Peter Guy to the centre. Bounces. Balford. Brilliant stuff. Picked it up nicely. Ran on quickly. The kick down looking for Munro. Munro couldn't get the second grab again. And Kenny Clark's there for Southport. KC comes out with the ball. The right foot kick goes to the centre wing position now. Finally, Gavin McGuan's got it. He picked it up nicely. McGuan on the left foot. Runs around the opponent. Has a left foot kick right up towards half forward. It's, oh, it's been over the head of O'Shorty there. And uh, finally, it comes out to Doreen. Frank Doreen for Kuhl and get the kick towards the centre wing position. And uh, there's going to be a uh, free kick going to McGuan or a... Uh, Mark to McGuan, he played him quickly, ball up to the forward line, Peter Guy's there again for Cool and Gatter. The kick by uh, Peter Guy is high, and Budge must throw it half forward, or well, half back for Southport. Budge kicked it nicely, Peter Boyce now, played on quick, the head pass to up, but he wasn't expecting it, but he recovered well. Danny up fell with the kick in towards the forward pocket, this is danger for Cool and Gatter. It's on the ground, it's picked up by Butch Thompson. Butch Thompson has a shot in towards goal, but there's no one home, and there's a good mark to Cool and Gatter. Taken back there by uh, Blight. He got it across to uh, Nusbin. Nusbin kicks it. Ronnie Lee takes the mark of the day. Centre half back right over the top of the pack and he's already starting. Ronnie, the kick for Cool and Gatter. Looking for Dan Barrow. Boyce comes in. Barrow recovered the best. Played on quickly but a shocking kick by Barrow out on the full. Yes, Ronnie Lee starting to show out his supremacy now in that centre. Although McGuan is also playing very well for South, a real good deal in the centre. Ronnie Lee's already had seven kicks for the match. We've only played 17 minutes into the first quarter. Danny Upfell for Southport comes out with the ball now. Kicks the ball into the back pocket with the mark taken there by uh, Blight. Blight for Cool and Gatter with the kick. Goes to the centre wing position now. It's picked nicely by Mick Young. Mick Young shot the pass to Belford. Belford having a bit of trouble out there and it's gone over the line and out of bounds on the centre wing on the outer side of the ground. With uh, Cool and Gatter three straight goals to Southport 1-1. There's the throw in. It's grabbed over the top of the pack here for uh, Southport by Butch Thompson. He played on, looked for the short pass to David McMahon. He played on, tackled with the ball, got the hand pass out though to Wellington. Wellington picks it up, runs onto the right foot, tries the short pass which is accurate. It goes to Gavin McGuan in the pocket. Gavin McGuan will take this free kick too far out to score. He's at virtually half forward. Gavin yeah, McGuan. He's too far out. He's on a very acute angle. All he can do is put it right up into the 10-yard square and hope that their big men can do something. But they're falling down up in that forward line again. There's the kick by Gavin McGuan. It's a nice-looking kick. Will it be touched off the pack? I think it was touched on the line there, and it's got through for one point. So that uh, takes Southport uh, on to one goal, two, eight points. To cool and get a three straight, three straight goal, 18 points. And the first quarter is underway by about 21 minutes. From the kick in, here's a chance for Lee again. Picked it up nicely, Ronnie Lee, the left foot kick this time. A pass to Robert Rocky who marks in the centre and will get a 15 metre penalty. You can't do that, Budge, particularly against Robert Rocky. 15 metre penalty, Larkin moves to centre half forward now. Here he comes with this kick, he should drive it long. He'll be looking for Munro, who's been kept out of it so far. The long kick goes down towards the forward pocket and it's been knocked out. Well, good defensive play there by Ken Clark for Southport as he knocked that ball over the line and out of bounds in the forward pocket. I'm not trying to take statistics here, but I've just got a bit of a count. Southport have been forward seven times without scoring, and that is where they're going to fail. They've got to get someone down forward very quickly. The ball has been knocked straight back over the line and out. 
uh, Coolan Gunner still hold the lead. There's the throw in. Villiers tapped it out to Needles, but it was a little bit too high for him. Picked up by Lovett. Grab with the ball, but he got a hand pass out towards uh, Budge. Thompson got it for Southport up from Budge. Coming in was Maxwell tackle. Johnny Needle beat two tackles, went for the hand pass. The umpire said it wasn't a legitimate hand pass. You threw it, John. Free kick to Sal Short. Selwyn Short, originally selected at full forward. He is on the line now. The kick by Selwyn Short has been marked by uh, O'Shaughnessy at centre-half back and a long kick came for Glenn. Looking for Belford, he couldn't mark the ball. Belford shot the hand pass out though towards Nusman. Nusman got a hand pass and a, and a bit of a uh, high tackle and Gabe Nusman will take this free kick and Gabe's at half forward. So short is ruck roving, incidentally, Bob. Right, there's the kick by Nusman. Long, forward pocket. Clark gave his opponent a nudge out. Play on, said the umpire. It's on the ground. There's a oh, shocking scramble out here. Larkin can't pick it up. Grab with the ball. Got a hand pass across. And the umpire said uh, it was a dropping the ball decision against Buddha Maxwell, who uh, made no real attempt to get rid of the free kick going in the back pocket to Gibson for Southport. His kick is an absolute shocker. It went straight to uh, Villiers in the uh, centre-half back position, unopposed. Now, Villiers will pass this ball if they give him the opportunity. And he does so. Brilliant pass for Kilo. Uh, Kilo in the, uh, between the half-forward line and the forward pocket. He'd be, uh, oh, he's still a fair way out. Mm, he's got a win advantage, and uh, he'll put this right in the square. There's the kick by Kilo. Uh, the distance was OK, but the accuracy not the best, and uh, it's been... Uh, it's gone over the line and out on the foot and the kick will go to uh, Doug Byron. The back pocket to Southport. Byron on that outer side of the ground has the kick now towards the half-back flank. It's picked out of the pack by Thompson. Butch Thompson it is. The kick goes towards Nusman who takes a good mark. And this, I think the umpire has paid it. No, he said play on. It comes out towards the half-forward line. Great mark to Peter Boyce though. Peter Boyce for Southport is marked at centre-half back. It's a very tight first quarter. Boyce. With the ball for the Magpies. Brings it to the grandstand side. Looking there. Oh, a good mark taken by Livingston. And Livingston played on quickly with the kick towards half forward. Who's there for Magpies this time? Comes the ground. Coming out nicely was Peter Guy. The big ruckman for Coolangatta with the kick towards Lee. Lee can go in position. It's on the ground now. Comes out towards uh, Maxwell. He lost it. Finally, uh, Livingston's got it for Southport. Uh, he was caught with the ball. The umpire said he could not get rid of that. And it will be a bounce up on the centre wing. There's the bounce up they go now. Whistle, free kick going to Southport to be taken by Villiers. Villiers will take the kick. Yeah, well, where, this is where Southport's got to pick up any loose man because Villiers is a very good disposal of the ball. Kick by Villiers is marked by Nusman. Nusman the hand pass to Randall, put him under a bit of pressure, but he got it again to Butter. Butter Maxwell for Cool and Gatter. Took a long time to get rid of it. Got it back to Nusman. Nusman wants to get a kick in. He finally got the kick in towards goal. It's right in towards the forward pocket and Munro mark. Great mark by Munro. That's his first touch for the day. He's 15 metres out and shouldn't miss from there. Yeah, well, Murray, of course, is lining up for his third goal, oh. and uh, he should have no trouble from that. Oh, gosh, he's kicked it into the man on the mark. He has kicked it into the man on the mark, so uh, I'd say that's the only... He must have had, what, three three kicks all day. Yeah, well, that was his shot for his third goal. He's already hit two. Just checking his statistics. That's right, he's only had the three kicks for two goals, but he shouldn't have missed that one. As the ball comes towards the... Uh, from the kick and goes to centre-half back now. Boyce has got it for Southport. Gave the hand pass for Gavin McGuan. He runs around his opponent nicely. McGuan has a long kick. This looks dangerous for Cool and Gatter as the ball has been knocked off the top of the pack. O'Shaughnessy as he grabs it and lost it. Gave a hand pass to Walsh. Walsh got it across here to uh, a teammate, and that teammate was Kieran. Kieran had the kick in towards the pocket, but it's, uh, I think it's just got through for a point. It has. Southport got a one goal from a TNT scoreboard. Cool and Gatter 3 1. First quarter we've got underway. We've had 26 minutes now when the time on period. Kick in. A long kick. Half back. Barrow couldn't get the second to that as it's picked up by Frankie DeRee, but he's, oh no, it almost went out on the pool, just bounced before the line, and it will be uh, thrown back, uh, will be thrown in here at half forward for Southport. It's a throw in, Villiers set himself, knocked down by Lato for Southport to a teammate who got a pu push fair square in the middle of the back, and that uh, is up foul, up will take the free kick in the, uh, on the centre wing position. And uh, Danny Upfell will take a long time to get this kick. Here he comes now with the kick. Towards the, not a very long one. Goes to half upward. And uh, oh, Mark dropped there by Villiers. Gives Southport a chance to score. As uh, McGuan, uh, whoa, gee, there's a fight on there. 
as McGar Butch Thompson tried to get the ball out of the pack, couldn't do so, and the umpire has uh, blown the whistle, and I'm not too sure what, he's, what the decision's going to be. There's also a slight scuffle in the forward pocket. Uh, but uh, we won't worry about the fights today. Let's concentrate on the football. But the umpires are worrying about the fights. Normally they let the play on uh, when we have a fight situation, but uh, they're all both over there at the moment. So a uh, slight delay in play. Coolangatta 3-1-19. Southport 1-3-8. 27 and a half minutes, first quarter. Yeah, we'll just wait and see what the umpire is doing. I think it's a free kick to Coolangatta. And the free kick is going in the back pocket there to uh, Roger Bett. Bett. Oh, good mark to Lovett for Southport. He marked that well in the centre. Ricky Lovett played on quickly of the kick, and there's a couple of Southport players left unattended. Peter Ives is one of them. He had a left foot kick, which is a ripper, right into the 10 metre square. Comes to ground. Big Wally Walsh tried to gain possession, but he got it down to the Rover. The Rover had a shot in towards goal, which is there. That's O'Connor. And Southport move on to two goals, three fifteen on the TNT scoreboard to Coolangatta, three one nineteen, four points the difference. And it's good play by O'Connor. He was scouting the pack very, very well. When the ball came down the ground, he was the only one there. Where he picked the crumbs up off the ground and made no mistake, put it straight through. Good football. That is one of the first times Southport have looked like any system whatsoever on their forward line. Well, back to the set ground. It's almost quarter time. The whistle's gone for. Uh, an infringement here, or a uh, player going over the centre square, and a free kick will go to Big Guy. Peter Guy for Cool and Gatter. Guy, long kick. Pettard, marks, no, couldn't grab it the second time. Kylo picked it out of the pack, but he was tackled. The umpire said he couldn't get rid of it properly, but there will be a bounce up. It's only about 40 metres out from the Cool and Gatter goal. 29 minutes, first quarter. Bounce. Larkin grabbed it out of the ruck, tried to kick. Balford, quick hand pass, smothered, comes to ground. Southport clear through Budge. Budge with the ball now towards the uh, half full line. Coming out towards the Southport player and up foul. The quick hand pass to Wellington was too quick because it went straight over the line and out of bounds. Yeah, stupid hand pass. He gave it to a man that even if he'd have got the ball, he was forced to go over the line. It was silly play. There's the throw in. Peter Guy grabbed it out of the ruck. Left foot kick by Guy. Comes out towards the centre. Picked up by Barrow in a bit of trouble. Tackled twice. He got one hit in the head. Got the second one. On second occasion, the umpire said, OK, Dan, you can have the kick. So Dan Barrow will take it in the centre wing position. Played on now. Right foot uh, stab pass. But it's been marked by Selwyn Short. Selwyn Short for Southport with a long kick. A long kick to the half. But there'll be a free kick to Southport here. It will go to Davidson at centre half forward. And this will put the, uh, the Magpies right in, uh, into attack. A long kick by Davidson into the square again. Big Wally Walsh went up. So did Wellington. It's going to be forced through for a point. I think it has. So that'll take uh, Southport onto two goals, four. That's 16 points. The cooling got a 3-1-19. It's on 30 minutes now into the first quarter at Salk Oval for the grand final. So the kick in. It's a long one. Centre half back, Guy, no, he couldn't mark that. Picked out of the pack by uh, Doreen, got the hand pass across. Roger Bett tackled with the ball, got the hand pass though, but it's been picked up quickly by Selwyn Short. Selwyn Short's kick was an absolute shocker. It went straight to Robert Rocky, who was knocked rotten after that. Robert Rocky wasn't too happy about it, so he got a free kick anyway. He's having a fight, but the free kick went to Cool and Gatter. It goes towards Gabe Nussman. If he gets, he'll be a goal to Cool and Gatter for sure and certain. Well, Robert Rocky Larkin was hit too high. Uh, he wasn't happy about it, as I said. He had a go at the guy who uh, hit him, which is fair enough, I suppose. But the umpire allowed play to go on. Went down to Gabe Nusbin, and Nusbin put it through for a goal, which is the most important thing. So on the TNT scoreboard, Coolangatta move on now to four goals, one. Uh, 25 points to Southport, two, four, 16. As we await the ball to come back to the centre of the ground, it's still very overcast on the horizon, but no rain here at the moment, although, Ronnie, you're pointing to me that uh, we could be in a bit of trouble. I think we could be. It's coming in from the Corumban Creek, and that's where we'll get it from, mate. I think we could be in. And isn't it great? Wayne sitting here with us on the roof, and no uh, cover to protect him from the rain. No, and he's not allowed to leave either because he's no. got an extra umbrella. <laughs> There's the uh, ball up in the centre. Peter Guy tried to get it out. It's picked up by Randall. Good play, son. The kick by Randall. Nelson marks. He plays well against Southport, this guy. Gabe Nussman, set a half forward. We'll have the kick down. It's a long one. Oh, Needles has marked. And played on, Bob, and he'll kick another goal here. Right through. Another one to the Blues. 
Couple of handy goals just on the quarter time siren. As uh, Coolan got to move on to 5 1 now, 31 to Southport, 2 4 16. About 31 minutes gone. Yeah, John Needles, the ever elusive John Needles, he read lay very well, the ball came over the back, he took the mark, he could have taken his kick, but he didn't worry about it while they were still wondering what happened. John Needles turned around and straight to the open goal, made no mistake with it, and that's got Coolangato into a very handy lead at this stage. Two goals in front and the quarter nearly over, now that's a good handy lead at this stage. The ball's back to the centre of the ground. Uh, not yet, Bob, no, because not. the kick was such a long one, it went into the creek. So we've got to bring the ball from the other end of the ground to get it back to the centre. Very fiery first quarter. There's been quite a few scuffles. Uh, at this stage of the match, Coolangatta on top in both uh, regards, and the, as well as the fight and also the uh, scoring. And that's the quarter time uh, siren. Quarter time siren, they didn't get a new ball for that too. That other one might never uh, be seen again. Quarter time out here at Sulkover with the score, Cool and Gatter. Five goals, one, 31. Southport, two goals, four, 16. We'll take a break and be back shortly with a quarter time. Start. Okay, there's the bounce. There's the uh, siren for the start of the second quarter as it's bounced up uh, in the centre now. It comes out of the pack. Going through very nicely was Mick Young for Cool and Gatter. Mick Young had a long kick in towards goal, which hit the post, I think. It hits the post and it's uh, it through for one point. So that'll take Kuhl and Gatter on to five goals, two, 32. To Southport, uh, two goals, four, 16. We've only played about 30 seconds into that uh, into this second quarter. That uh, wind is very strong at the moment. There's the kick in now. Goes to half back. Budge goes up. Barrow got in, in front of him. Picked out of the pack by Belford. He lost the ball. The umpire said he did exactly that. He lost it when tackled. And there will be a free kick going out there to Peter Boyce. Peter Boyce in the half-back line for the uh, Magpies. Tried a hand pass, got it across to Big Doug Byron. He got the kick up uh, f further forward as it comes towards the boundary line. Lee's there. Quick pass by Ronnie Lee goes to a teammate out there in uh, Johnny Needle. Johnny Needle picks it up. He shot the hand pass back to Lee. They want to get a kick in here. Lee has tried a short little pass to Big Peter Guy. Peter Guy for Cool and Getter, a long kick. Kilo hits him off and mark. Yes, Peter Guy has gone on to the ball. I thought this would happen, and now he's with that result, he's got the ball right down to full forward. And Keogh with the ball, he's only about 20 metres out. Very slight angle, should put another goal on the board. Lining the kick up and has done exactly that. It's right through the centre, and that's a good lead now to Cool and Gatter. With the weather very threatening out here, they move on to uh, six goals, two, uh, 38 points to Southport, two goals, four. 16 points, and we've only played uh, about two minutes into this uh, second quarter here at Salk Oval in the grand final. The bounce in the centre again. Guy sets himself for the punch out. He missed this one as Wally Walsh got the knockout, but Guy was able to recover. He sharked that ball. He kicked it down in towards the forward pocket. Butter Maxwell got a push out. The umpire said he didn't. Play on was the call, and the ball has raced towards the boundary line. It's gone over the line and out. And it's uh, between the forward pocket and half forward flank for Cool and Gatter. And uh, just want to make one comment here, Bob. That witness swung right round and is now favouring the highway into the ground, which Cool and Gatter are kicking to. From the ball up, uh, from the throw in, it's picked out of the pack uh, nicely by Gavin McGuan. McGuan for Southport with the kick looking out there. There should be an in the back to Sell Short, there is. And Selwyn Short will take the free kick at half back. Selwyn Short, ruck roving. Take this kick, there it goes. Right foot cow towards the centre wing position. Uh, Wellington went up, couldn't get the mark. Ronnie Lee got it, broke clear of the pack, gave it across to Larkin. Larkin to Guy. Guy a long hand pass, sharp by Peter Ives. Peter Ives the quick kick, Needles goes up, couldn't mark it, knocked it down though. Finally came out and picked it up himself and got a left foot kick which hit the umpire and almost winded the umpire who's distressed at the moment. The ball comes towards uh, the half forward line for Southport but Roger Betts there for the Blues. The kick by Bet goes to the centre. Budge, budge the hand pass to Boyce. Away goes Southport, Peter Boyce, the short pass is too short, goes there, it's been beaten Cairn who was originally intended for, and it's come out now to Blight, a long kick by Blight for Cool and Gatter, towards the centre of the ground, looking for Barrow Barrow couldn't mark the ball and it's uh, picked out of the pack by Gabe Nusman, the kick by Nusman to half forward, finally it comes out now to Buddha Maxwell, Buddha's had a long kick in towards goal, which is just off again and through for another point to Cool and Gatter
Yes, and Kill and Gunner are looking good. They're looking for one another when they've got the ball. They're looking for teammates. On the other hand, Southport getting the ball and putting their boot to it and trying to drive it forward, and that won't get any results. Kool and Gunner are looking very good at the moment, and this lead they've got should stand them good. I think they'll uh, probably even go on a bit from here. Southport have got to start doing something before they've lost the Premiership. Score at the moment there. Uh, Kool and Gunner are six goals, uh, three to Southport, two, four. And from the kick-in, Guy uh, Young tried to pick it up, couldn't do so. It's gone over the line and out of bounds. And it's at half forward for the Blues. Throw in. Guy punched down. Kylo tried to pick it up. McMahon. Hand pass by McMahon. Went to Kylo. Finally, it comes out to Gavin McGuane, who got a kick, and it's been uh, picked up by Ronnie Lee. Ronnie Lee runs in with a kick now. A right footer in towards Munro. Pushed into the ball. Will take the mark and or free kick. Yes, the umpire's paid the mark because he's brought him round right dead set in front of goals, five metres out, and uh, we'll see another goal to Cool and Gunner, I'm sure, because Munro missed an easy one before, but he won't miss this one. Munro lining the ball up, or lining the goal up, only 15 metres out from goal with a kick which is right through. And Cool and Gunner move to seven goals, three which is uh, 45 points to Southport, 2 four, 16 and Southport are not looking good at the moment, Rob. No, they're not looking good. They're not even playing to position. They've got about three players out there trying to get them going, but the rest of them are just seen to be uh, hunting in packs and not going to get a fast play on football going. Unless they get it done, they're going to have a lot of trouble. From the bounce up in the centre, Butch Thompson got it out to Gavin McGuan. Gavin McGuan gave it to Davidson. Davidson kicks it to Wellington, but it was too short for him, and O'Shaughnessy marks it centre-half back for Cool and Gatter. He played on quickly, the pass is good, and it's been marked out there at half-back or at half-forward for the Blues by Barrow. That's Dan Barrow. A long kick by Barrow. It's long, all right. I reckon you're right about that wind changing. Right into the 10-metre square, uh, square it goes. And uh, it's going to... Yes, it's gone out now. The half-forward flank for Cool and Gatter. He's certainly got plenty of distance with that kick, Ron. Yes, plenty of distance. Though the wind has definitely changed. Cool and Gatter have got the advantage again. And one thing that I do notice, uh, they've switched boys down into the forward line for Southport. But I think they might be a case to shut the gate after the horse has bolted. Well, they're five goals down at the moment. The Magpies, Gavin McGuire has just got the mark and kick for Southport. Kicks it to Wellington. Wellington get it, couldn't get it. Picked up by Frankie Doreen, who tried the pass to Lee. It wasn't well directed. Ronnie Lee's lost position here as David uh, Lytton Caven came out. Lytton Caven gave it to Peter Ives. Peter Ives gave it back to Caven. He gave it to Wellington. Wellington now gave it to Upfell. Danny Upfell has a shot from 45 metres out and has kicked the goal. So Southport now move on to three goals for 22 points to uh, Coolangatta 7 3 45. And then into the second quarter, we've played about six or seven minutes, about seven minutes just on. And that was the first time for the game we've seen a bit of play on football by Southport. That's the sort of football that can win the game for them if they can get it going. Coolangatta haven't let them do it so far, but uh, okay, now they've started, perhaps it can happen. Ball's back to the centre. There's going to be a centre bounce infringement. The free kick going to Peter Guy. Peter Guy for Cool and Gatter. Right in towards the pocket. Kilo couldn't mark it. Needles lost it. Trip play on. No, the umpire said it will be a uh, free kick, and this time it's going to Southport, and it will be taken there in the back pocket by Mr. Clark. Kenny Clark. Left foot kick by Clark to half back. Another Southport mark. Byron. Byron with the ball, played on quickly, gives it out towards Wellington. Wellington and O'Shaughnessy racing for it near the boundary line. Wellington got it first, but he was forced over. It has gone out now at half forward for Southport. And 3-4 and Coolangatta a 7-3. Throw in. Nusband went up for that uh, hit out. Come out of the pack and picked up uh, by uh, Gavin McGuan it is now who's got it. Gavin McGuan with a long kick forward. But uh, it goes over the top of everybody's head and uh, it's just missed scoring. It's gone through for one point. No, no, uh, gone the, out. no, the umpire ruled that it did touch the point post, so it is out of bounds. So no change to the score. Throw in in the pocket. Comes out of the top, out of the pack there where Davidson picked it up for Southport. He ran right around, had a shot to goal, which uh, was from an impossible angle. He kicked the goal. Kicked the goal. 
And this is what Southport needs. They need to get a few quick goals on them now to get their uh, confidence back. I think their confidence was way down. And now they've kicked two goals. Maybe they'll get their confidence back. And we might see some run-on football by Southport. If they can get it going, they've, they've got to get it going in a very big hurry because, uh, you know, they're looking at four goals down already. And at half-time, they've got to be with Cool and Gatter. If they're behind, Cool and Gatter will give them no mercy in the second half. Score at the moment is uh, Coolangatta 7 goals 3.45 to Southport 4 goals 4.28. From the ball up, the way go the pies again. That's uh, O'Connor, the kick to half forward. Coming out to Upfell, picked it up. A hand pass to Boyce. Boyce will try the hand pass, intercepted by Peter Guy, and well done, Peter. The kick by Guy goes to half back, but uh, there will be a mark to Southport. Budge has taken it. Away goes Budge, moved onto the left foot, kicks it up to half forward out there, looking for Kieran. Uh, Linton Kieran picked the ball up, left foots it in towards the forward pocket, but uh, the man there again is Guy. Peter Guy for Cool and Getter. Good kick and a good mark to Gabe Nusband. Gabe Nusband with the ball on the centre wing, looking for Ronnie Lee, who no one seems to be on him today. Lee on his own, takes the mark in the centre and gives the pass to Pettard. Wayne Pettard at centre half forward for Cool and Getter. Oh, uh, Possibly have a shot for goal from that angle from there. Yeah, he should kick it from here. He's not that far out. He's dead in front. There's the kick by Pettard. Plenty of distance, but uh, no accuracy at all. It's gone over the line and out of bounds on the fall. As we await the uh, ball to be thrown back in. Now there will be a free kick, of course, going to Southport. And the free kick uh, going back there in the back pocket that comes out. Gavin McGuan marks again. He's played well this uh, today, McGuan. He's marked at set a half back. The Guan with the kick now towards the centre wing position. Randall and takes a nice mark over his head. That's Randall in the centre wing position. Ran around the man on the mark nicely. The kick goes down towards the uh, half forward line and a good mark taken by uh, Budge again for Southport playing well. That's Budge. Budge with the ball now. In the uh, centre half back position for Southport. As Budge comes out with a kick, a right foot kick towards the sea, uh, centre wing position, coming out to Caveron, he overran the ball, here's Barrow, that's Dan Barrow, dropped the, uh, he dropped the ball before he could get boot to ball there, and uh, Southport are going to get, uh, get uh, clear of that uh, through uh, Upfell, Upfell's kick goes and a good mark taken by Peter Boyce, although the umpire has paid the push out, and the resultant free kick going to Cool and Gatter to be taken there by Blight. Blight in the back pocket, a long kick towards the uh, half forward line for Cool and Gatter. Knocked away by uh, Wellington, tapped it forward. It's on the ground, scramble, free kick going to Southport and will be taken by O'Connor. O'Connor for the Magpies. He's in the centre. He ran on nicely, a long kick down towards the forward line now. Up goes O'Shaughnessy, couldn't get the mark. There's a chance for Southport to go forward as Peter Ives is running in towards goal. He had a snapshot in towards the uh, goal line, but it's been picked up by Roger Bett. Roger Bett kicked it out long. Wellington's there. So too is Kieran. Kieran has a standing shot for goal, but it's a shocker. And it's gone through. It's got through for one point. So that takes the score onto Southport. Four goals, five. Uh, 29 points to Coolangatta, 7-3, 45 on the TNT scoreboard, and we've played into the uh, second quarter about 12 minutes. Southport are starting to show signs of the old Southport that we know, and uh, gee, if they can get it going, this will be a real good game, but uh, Coolangatta still on top. Now from the kick in, it goes towards the centre half back position, we've had uh, picked up by Villiers, he gave it to O'Shaughnessy, O'Shaughnessy on the left foot, has the kick down towards the uh, forward pocket position now, looking out there for a teammate in uh, Munro. Munro had a kick in towards goal. Here's a chance for a cool and get a goal. Needles tried to soccer it through. It's been uh, kicked through by somebody down there. It's a goal, I think. It's a goal. Not too sure who kicked that one, Ron. It was Butter Maxwell, I'm sure, but I'm just waiting to get a good look at him myself. Well, Butter. It was him. There was a lot of players trying to get the ball. He just threw the boot at it. It's uh, connected, obviously, and it's got through. No, yeah. I think it was Rocky Larkin, actually, Bob. I just realised it was Rocky Larkin that did it. Well, the score is cool and get a eight goal three now. The Southport four five. And we're midway through the second quarter of the big Gold Coast Grand Final here from Salk Oval. There's the bounce in the centre. Love it. Got the hit down. Goes out towards uh, coming through nicely was Linton Kieran for the Magpies. The kick by Kieran up to big Wally Walsh. 
Boyce over the back. Roger Bet got it, lost it straight away. Holding the man to bet. Holding the man to bet, says the umpire. And Roger will take the free kick in the back pocket. Roger Bet with the ball now, a long kick to half forward. Up they go, free kick, and it will go here. It's going to go to uh, Gabe Nusman, I think, and set a half back for Coolangatta. There's the kick, uh, Nusman will take the kick now. There it goes towards the outer side of the ground. Looking out there for a teammate who got uh, heavily tackled, Ronnie Lee, and he'll take that free kick. Ronnie Lee will be on the wing, but he's on the outer side of the ground. Yes, he's too far out to score, but uh, he should be able to put the ball right down into the attacking zone from here. Kick by Lee, right into the pocket. Picked out of the pack there by a Southport player in Lovett. It's been knocked forward. Here's a chance for Cullen get a goal as Pettard had a shot in towards goal, but it's uh, well off line and it's gone over the line and uh, will be thrown into play, I think. No, it will be a uh, free kick going to uh, Southport. The ball comes up to half-back now. Going out for it uh, was, uh, looks like Tanglemoo on the ground for uh, Coolangatta. Got it to Nusman. Nusman's caught with the ball. The umpire said he couldn't get rid of it. And the umpire will now bounce the ball. It's at half forward between the half forward line and the wing and the outer side of the ground for Coolangatta. Bounce, centre. Picked out of the pack by Budge. Budge for Southport. Kicked it up to half forward. Wellington got it across now towards uh, Danny Upfell. Danny Upfell with the ball. Got it to Kieran. Caught with it. Play on, says the umpire. He got the hand pass. Frankie Doreen comes out for cool and get over left foot kick. Right in towards the forward line. Ball punched away from Munro. Wayne Pettard picks it up. He gave the hand pass to Robert Rocky. Robert Rocky is in being tackled five times. Too high again. Free kick to Robert Rocky. Free kick to Larkin. Yeah, another little scuffle has broken out uh, down there, but Cool and Gatter don't shouldn't worry about that. They should just let uh, Robert Rocky, who ran away from that uh, scuffle, he wants to have a kick. Played on quickly, and there's a player left unattended. It's Mick Young. Bad defence by Southport there, and Mick Young will take the free kick. He'd be about 15 metres out, but he's on a pretty acute angle. But on the right side of the ground for a right footer, that's if he's a right foot kick. Uh, he's a right foot kick. He's still on a pretty acute angle, even though a right foot kick will help him, but... Uh, It'll have to be a very accurate kick from that angle because the goals, he's not getting much daylight through those posts. There's the kick by Young. It's uh, offline and through for one point. So that takes the score on the TNT scoreboard to Cooling at 8 4 to Southport 4 5 29. And uh, we've played now for 15 and a half minutes into the second quarter here at uh, Solcable. From the kick in, goes out towards Belford. Belford takes a nice mark at half forward. Belford was the mark for uh, Cooling now he runs around, has a kick, he centred it right in towards the square again. And there's oh. a great mark taken down there. Who was that to come over that the top? That's uh, Pettard, isn't it? Well, that was a spectacular mark. That was the mark of the year, never mind the mark of the day. That was a beautiful mark, and it was Wayne Pettard. Yeah, well, similar to what Roy Hart used to do. Come in from the side of the pack and just uh, pluck it out of the air. Pettard has uh, capitalised with that, I think, and kicked a goal. And totally deserves two, and it's right through. And Coolangatta goes further ahead of Southport. Coolangatta are nine goals, four, 58 points. Southport are four, five, 29. And uh, as we keep saying, it doesn't look good for the uh, Magpies, but it's still very, very early. And I wouldn't go giving them away yet, Ron. No, I won't give them away, but they've got to do something. They're, uh, they're losing uh, down in their, their backs, can't, can't control the Southport forwards. And yet when they get it down forward, their forwards can't contain the cooling out of back. They've got problems, and uh, they'll have to do something about them very, very quickly. So there's a set of bounce uh, infringement and the free kick going to cooling out of to Peter Guy. The rain starts to come here again. We only had a light shower before. Now it's a little bit heavier. Guy, the kick up towards the uh, forward line now. But uh, Kenny Clark's there for Southport. Ken Clark with the kick to the wing. Ronnie Lee's there. Ronnie's picked the ball up now. Moves onto the left foot nicely, Lee. Right foot kick it is this time. Right into half forward. A beautiful pass to Larkin. And a very quick hand pass to a teammate. It was so quick that he uh, wasn't aware it was coming. Anyway, finally you got Pettard who picked it up. Uh, for Kuhl and Gatter, a long kick in towards the forward pocket position and uh, there's been a mark down there, let's try and work out uh, who is this guy That's Wayne Pettard, Pettard again. It is. must have been Tackleman who picked the ball up and kicked it down to Pettard and Pettard who seems to be right up at full forward at the moment anyway, he's uh, within the square, has taken the mark and has a chance to win another one 
that he's done it too. Yes, he shouldn't miss from that distance. Well, Phil is going to further ahead. What more can we say? They're 10 goals. What is our thoughts? Four goals, five, 20 minutes gone. Second quarter of the rain coming down of this ground gets wet and heavy. That lead is going to be a big one to uh, overhaul. Really. That lead is under overhaul. Any conditions and...